Hi, I'm Summer. I'm a flight instructor here at Learn to Fly. Today we'll be taking you through the pre-flight inspection for the Piper Seminole. To start off our pre-flight, we'll begin in the cockpit. Then we're going to move our way around the rear side of the right wing, moving towards the right engine, stopping at the nose and continuing along towards the left engine and left wing, coming down the fuselage towards the tail and then finishing up back on the co-pilot side. Our pre-flight starts when we walk out to the aircraft. As we walk out to the aircraft, we want to check that the aircraft is in what's called a normal ground attitude, meaning that the wings are level. We do this by approaching the front of the aircraft and checking that both wings are equidistant from the ground. If they're not, this could be indicative of a flat tyre or possibly a landing gear issue. We're then going to remove the cover. To do this, we simply unclip the buckles and then gently remove the cover from the canopy. When we're removing the cover, we want to be very careful as to not scratch the surface of the aircraft as we do so. So take your time and ensure you are removing it gently. Once we've taken the cover off, we can then either place it in the rear baggage compartment or back in the entrance to LTF. During cold mornings or during the winter months, we always want to check the aircraft for frost or ice. We do this by running our hand along any water droplets to ensure they're not frozen or crystallised. If they are, let your instructor know and they'll talk you through how to remove it appropriately. We can now gently step up onto the aircraft, ensuring we only stand in the designated black areas. We can then open the door by simply unlatching the bottom and top latch and pulling the door open. The first part to our pre-flight inspection is to check the cabin, ensuring all the documentation is on board and the engine controls and instruments are ready for flight. Before we begin, we can gently remove the control lock and step into the cabin. The first thing we want to check is the documentation. To do that, we get the aircraft folder and we want to check both the trip sheet and the maintenance release. Firstly, we can fill in the trip sheet with the date, our name, our pilot in command's name, and the flight switch, which we'll be able to find inside the cockpit. We can then fill in the rest of the trip sheet, such as the fuel and the oil, as we complete the rest of our pre-flight inspection. We can then check the maintenance release. The first thing we want to do is ensure that the maintenance release belongs to the correct aircraft. And then we can check that the date and time of expiry, which is the flight switch we just checked, have not surpassed. Once we've done so, we can check the category that the aircraft is certified to fly in and ensure that we are able to conduct our flight. We can then go ahead and check the scheduled maintenance and ensure that any maintenance that was due on or before the date or flight switch in which we'll be conducting our flight has been completed and signed off. We can then check the bottom of the maintenance release for any pilot endorsements and check that they have either been signed off or that they don't affect the category of flight that we will be flying in. Turning over to the other side, we can then check if the maintenance release has been signed for the day. If it hasn't, contact your instructor and get them to sign it for you. We also want to check that we have the Garmin operating manuals as well as a Seminole Pilot operating handbook in the aircraft. We can now start running through our checklist for the cabin ensuring firstly that the gear lever is in the down position. Then we want to make sure that all of our switches are off. Once I've done so, we can turn the master switch on. Once the master switch is on, we want to check that we have three green gear lights and then check our fuel quantities as well. We now want to turn the switches on turning on the lights and the pedo heat, which we'll check in a moment. We can then go ahead as well and put the flaps fully down, lifting the lever all the way up to the third click. Once the flaps are down, we want to ensure that we don't step on the flap step as it is now unsafe. We can now go around the aircraft and check the lights, beginning with checking the strobe and position lights on the right hand side, checking the landing light on the nose, and then coming around to the strobe and position lights on the left hand side. We also want to check that our pedo heat is working, and then we can come around to check the tail lights as well, ensuring that both are working efficiently. 
Once we've done so, we can now come back into the cockpit, turning off all lights as well as the pedo heat. We can now continue down the checklist, ensuring that our fuel selectors are both on and our cow flaps are open. We also want to check the movement of the throttle levers, the pitch levers, as well as our mixture levers. We also want to go ahead and check the control movement, moving the controls fully in all directions to ensure they're operating smoothly. The next thing on our checklist is to check that both our elevator and rudder trim wheels are neutral. And then continuing to check that our pedostatic system drains are pushed in. We also then want to ensure that any unoccupied seats have the seat belts fastened. And finally we want to check the condition of our emergency exit, ensuring that there's no damage. The next part of our pre-flight video is to check the right wing and engine. We're going to come around from the back, checking the flaps and ailerons as well as the landing gear and then finishing off in the engine. The first thing we want to do is drain the fuel. The fuel drains are located on the right side by the step. We want to drain both fuel drains and once we've done so we want to check the mixture to ensure that it's slightly blue in colour, as Avgas will be, and ensure that there are no bubbles in the fuel mixture. If there are bubbles, that could be indicative of water and we want to continue to drain the fuel until there's no water remaining. We can now continue by checking the flap. Firstly, checking for movement in the hinge and then checking that the flap itself feels firm and secure. We can also come along and check any static wicks and also checking the underside of the flap, ensuring that any other bolts or hinges are intact and there's no structural damage to the flap. We can now continue along to the aileron. Again, checking the aileron hinge has a small amount of movement. And then checking the movement of the aileron itself by gently lifting it up and down. As we lift the right aileron up, we want to ensure that the left aileron goes down and vice versa. We can now continue along the aileron checking any static wicks and also checking the underside of the aileron for any other hinges or bolts, ensuring that there is no damage and that they are secure. Once we've done so, we can now move around the wing tip, running our hand along the surface and ensuring that it's smooth, there are no chips or cracks. Once we've done so, we can now check the underside of the wing as well, ensuring that there is no structural damage to the underside. This here is our tie down point where we would remove any ties if there was one attached. It's now time to check the fuel. We can do so by lifting up the hatch and unscrewing the fuel cap. If the fuel tanks are full, we can visually inspect the level, otherwise we can inspect the level with the use of a dipstick. We now want to check the oil by lifting up the hatch and unscrewing the dipstick. We can then pull the dipstick out and visually inspect the oil level. We wanted approximately 5 quarts and if you think you may need extra oil, contact your instructor to assist. It's also really important that we check the left and right indicators on the dipstick, as if it's in the incorrect engine, then it will read slightly differently. Once we've done this, we can then replace the dipstick and close the hatch. Once we've done so, we want to check the overall condition of the engine cowling, ensuring that there is no damage. We also want to check the vents, make sure that they're clear of any debris, and also checking the exhaust pipes are free from damage. While we're underneath the engine, we can also visually inspect the cow flaps to ensure that they are free from any debris. It's now time to check the propeller, gently running our hand along the edges, ensuring that there are no chips or dents. We also want to gently hold the propeller near the propeller hub and twist to ensure there's no movement. And finally, we want to check the condition of the propeller hub. The last thing we want to check on this right side is our tyre and landing gear. We want to ensure that the tyre is inflated and that there are no bald spots where the tread has been worn down. We also want to continue up to check the brake, hydraulic tube and landing gear itself for any damage. We can also go on to check the gear well for any debris that may be present. And then finally coming back down to ensure that all bolts are secure. The next part to our pre-flight is to check the nose. 
We're gonna be checking the overall condition of the nose and we're gonna check the nose gear as well. We're gonna start by checking the condition of the right side, ensuring that any vents are clear and that the overall surface is free of dints or chips. We can now also come forward and check the landing light and moving around towards the left side to ensure that there is no damage. We also want to check the nose gear, ensuring that the tyre is inflated and there is again no bald spots. And then coming up towards the landing gear itself, checking the gear strap for any damage and ensuring any bolts are secure. We also want to check the turn stops on the left and right side to ensure that there are no cracks. And then we can continue up to ensure that there is no debris in the gear well. Lastly, we want to check that the windscreen is clear, and if not, we can clean it. The next part of our free flight is to check the left wing. We're going to begin by checking the engine, coming down to check the landing gear, and then following along the wing to check the overall condition as well as the flap and the aileron. The first thing we want to do is check the cow flap, ensuring that there's no debris. Then we can come along and check the overall condition of the engine cowling, ensuring that there are no scratches or dents. Once we've done so, we can also check the vents, ensuring that there is no debris in the vents, similar to as we did in the cow flaps. While we're here, we also want to check the exhaust for any damage. Once we've finished checking the engine cowling, we can now go ahead and check the propeller. We check the propeller by simply running our hands gently along the edges, ensuring there are no chips or dints, and then giving the propeller a gentle wiggle to ensure it is firm. And finally, we want to check the condition of the propeller hub. We can then move on to check the oil, same as we did on the other side, we want to open the latch and untwist the dipstick. We now want to visually inspect the oil level as approximately 5 quarts. And we also want to check the left and right indicator to ensure that this time we're seeing a left indication for the left engine. We can then check the fuel tanks as we did on the other side, opening the latch and unscrewing the fuel cap. If the tanks are full, we can visually inspect as demonstrated here, otherwise we can use the dipstick to get an accurate measurement of our fuel quantities. It's now time to check the leading edge of our left wing. We just run our hands over looking for any chips or scratches. And checking the stall switches are moving. They won't make a noise on the ground, hence we didn't check them when the master was on. However, we do want to make sure they're not obstructed by any debris. Then we can move along and check the aileron. Checking the static wicks and ensuring that the hinge has a slight bit of wobble. Then we can go ahead and move the aileron up and down, just as we did on the right side, ensuring that the opposite aileron moves opposite. We can now continue along towards the flap, again checking the static wick, as well as the movement of the flap hinge and the overall condition. It's now time to check the pedo tube, ensuring that any of the holes are not obstructed by debris. We can then continue checking the underside of the aileron, ensuring that any hinges or bolts are secure, as well as removing any tie downs, and then continuing along the underside of the flap. Finally, we want to check the left landing gear, ensuring that the tyre is inflated and that there are no bald spots on the tread. We also want to check the condition of the brakes, as well as the hydraulic tube to ensure that there's no damage or leaks. We can then continue on to ensure that all bolts are secure and that our squat switch is intact and in the position shown. This is important as a squat switch is what prevents the aircraft landing gear from being raised well on the ground. We can then finish up by checking the gear well for any debris. The final part to our pre-flight inspection is to check the fuselage and empennage, checking the overall condition as well as the rudder and the elevator. Firstly, we want to start by checking our aerials as well as the GPS which is located on top of the cabin. We can now check the overall condition of our left fuselage, ensuring that there is no damage or marks. Once we've done that, we want to come up along the vertical stabiliser, checking the condition as well as any other antennas, and untying any tie downs if we have them. We can then work our way up the linkages and hinges connecting the vertical stabiliser with our rudder. We want to ensure that they are all intact, there are no missing bolts or screws. If something looks abnormal, let your instructor know. Continuing to work our way up, closely inspecting all the linkages. We can now check the static wicks on the rudder. We can also check the movement as well as the overall condition of the rudder, 
including the rudder trim, ensuring that any linkages or hinges between the two are intact. We can now come back down the vertical stabiliser on the right side, ensuring that again any linkages or hinges are intact. The main thing we're checking on the right side is the trim wheel pin. We want to ensure that there's overhang on the right side and the pin is not slipping out. We can then go ahead and also check any antennas on the right side. We can now come along to the horizontal stabiliser and the elevator. Again on the elevator we want to ensure that any linkages or hinges are fully intact, as well as checking the overall condition. We can also apply some slight movement to ensure that the elevator is moving. It's now time to continue along the right side of the fuselage, again checking for any possible damage. Once we come back towards the step, we want to check that it's firm and secure. And then we can finish up with checking the rear baggage compartment. We want to open up the baggage compartment, ensuring that there are no loose objects, and then making sure that it's closed and locked before we go flying. And that concludes our pre-flight inspection for the Piper Seminole. Now let's go flying.